check it out over here. Got him! In here! Down there for weeks, starving. Now he's put us in these cages. You gotta help me, Doc.
this is for your own good. That are safe and sorry. Please. Please, I gotta eat. Maybe we should give him something to chew on. That's out of the question. It would undermine the veracity of the tests. Who are you? All right. I just needed to know you weren't, uh, one of those things. Didn't want to freak you out, but I've been keeping my eye on you. Shit! That's one of them. It's close by. Anyone back the way you came? I don't know. Maybe they're already gone. But we gotta get out of here. This way. I think we're okay, for the time being anyway. I'm David, I work here. How long have you been in here? Yeah, some patients can't even remember what day it is. I get it. Why are you alone here anyhow? Everybody already left. You pissed someone off? This place has got the stench of something rotten. Since they brought those miners here, they were supposed to get better. Jesus. Better. Not exactly what I'd call it. Well, hard to say exactly. But something changed with the miners. They went wild, like they were possessed, like turned into literal monsters. You've never seen anything like it. I wish I could blot it from my mind. We gotta keep moving. There are other survivors. They're not far, come on. Alright, follow me. 
Tony. Stay near me, will you? We're almost to Bragg's office. Everybody else is holed up with Ted in the chapel. I'd be there too, but you know Bragg. It's always something with him. He had to go back, and Suzanne and I are his escorts. They should be waiting for me in his office. I came out here to scope it out. Watch your step. Take it nice and slow. I haven't seen any of the miners since the uh, incident. I can still hear them, though. Mostly outside. I mean, I think it's them. Ugh, gives me the chills every time. Brad's office is right down the hall. Bragg was not exactly pleased someone called in the cops. Guess he's worried they'll catch a whiff of something they ain't supposed to. Hearing about it's one thing. Seeing it, she was a good lady. Didn't deserve that. I hope when the police show up, they plug every last fucking miner they see. Honcho himself. Hey, um, it's David. Can I come in? Mr. Bragg, Suzanne, found someone else needs an escort. Jesus, David, why the hell would you bring him here? Um, I, I don't, what's the big deal? I couldn't just leave him. I know what you've done. You're a monster, you sicken me. So, patient, how are we feeling today? You really don't... 
Your roommate is dead. That's all I know. Are you sure you don't remember anything? I appreciate your honesty. This whole mess. Ugh. Bennett, your roommate. Is a dear friend, colleague, one of our staff doctors, not, not a patient. I'm sorry. The deception was necessary. I needed to observe your progress as closely as possible. There was no way to know that all this oh, that would end up so. Now there's nothing in a caterpillar that lets you know it's gonna be a butterfly. And sadly, opposite's also true. I think you're right. I think, how did it come to this? I, I should never have come back. Sorry, I, I thought I could right the ship. But you can't steer a ship in a squall. Mr. Bragg, you've been down before. You'll pull us all through, I know you will. Oh, Suzanne, my dear. I admire your optimism, but it's misplaced in me. This is, uh, uh, it's just too big to keep quiet. I'm finished. No, Mr. Bragg, please, let's just go to the chapel. The, the storm's let up, the police are yes. on their way. To the chapel. Thank you. Go, now. I'm staying here. We can't leave you behind. It's not safe. Please. You know we all have to go. Everyone, Bragg included. Stop! Enough! This place belongs to me. And I belong to it. Now get the hell out of here. And take that monster with you. Mr. Brad. Suzanne, stop. Come on. He's made up his mind. No. No! We gotta go now while we still can. Get out! Leave me alone! Haven't you done enough damage? That what you tell yourself. Get the fuck out. Understand. Why wouldn't Bragg want to come with us? He built this place. Would you be able to leave that behind? Oh, Jesus, look at that. Oh, God, it's awful. Christ, what happened here? What do we do to deserve this? Let me go home. I, I just want to see my family again. What's up with you? You're as white as a sheet.
You don't know what's out there. There was nothing out there before. Let's just go one at a time. You remember what Ted said? One of those things shows up, don't move a fucking muscle. I'll go first. When I make it across, I'll give a signal and the next one comes. You next, or am I? Okay, I'll follow. All right, easy. Take it easy. You're lucky you made it back in one piece. You should never have gone back. Hey, it's not like we could have just let him go out there alone. Alone? That was his choice. He wouldn't listen to us. Oh, yes. Well, if Bragg had made up his mind, there's nothing on heaven or earth that would, would have changed it. Father Ted Mosley, I'm glad to meet another survivor. Father, the only reason we're alive right now is because you told us not to move. At first, I couldn't believe it, but... I saw it all from here. I'm glad you made it back here. Not everyone has been so lucky today. The mythology I've been telling you about, the story of these things, I never knew how true it all was. This is not a disease. This is not a virus. This is a curse. There are more survivors holed up in the administration offices. They still think it's an infection. They have no idea what they're up against. They need our help. I 
I've been so worried about each and every one of you. I warned Brack something like this could happen. I warned him there was something here on the mountain. An evil spirit, powerful. But he wouldn't listen. It's like what happened to the miners. What they did to each other to survive. When I was a missionary interacting with the native people, I'd hear these stories told with great conviction. But of course, back then, I only trusted in my own faith, so I dismissed them as mere superstition. Unsubstantiated campfire tales. They spoke of monsters that got inside of you. Monsters that fed on human flesh, insatiable, hungry, rapacious. They said the only way to elude the creatures was to remain perfectly still. But beyond that, there was no way to fend them off. They called them Wendigo. I never truly believed they were real. Until now. I'd advise everyone to get a little shut-eye while we can. Excuse me. Suzanne, just hold tight. They're coming to get us out of this. Playing with fire, Brad. There's something bigger than the two of us at work in this place, and we've got to be careful. Stuff and nonsense. What you're saying is ludicrous. 